studying ideal gases in physics uh, which which never occur basically what we have is real gases right so why do we study ideal gases in physics because you know the the same theory could be extrapolated to studying real gases right so in the same way we are studying perfect competitions because you know the the models that we study will help us understand the supply and demand and how it affects the prices uh, you know in, in in the real economy right now so this this is how why, why we study perfect competition this is one reason so again you have to note that this is basically uh, not applicable in the real world never no there is no market like a perfect competition in the real um, uh, economy right second when we are studying perfect competition we make certain assumptions those are very very important one and foremost assumption is that we assume that the uh, the products they are basically identical so all the firms they are you know selling the same type of product or the differentiation is very very less or which is negligible right so if let's say a samsung is selling a phone apple is also selling the same phone with, with a very little difference in the features but in real world it doesn't happen like that right so this is the first assumption that you know the products are identical or homogeneous right second is that there are many basically that i have told you there are many buyers and sellers in the market that is unsaid third is that the price which is price of the con uh, price of the product is decided by the market supply and demand so no firm at the individual level can basically change the price or can set the price so they don't have this power to influence the price right so this is very again very important when we'll calculate the profit maximization for a firm we'll, we'll consider that the price is constant and that is nothing but the equilibrium price so when we study that supply and demand where they intersect that will give you the uh, you know uh, equilibrium price so all the firms they are operating at this equilibrium price and they cannot alter this price individually right they don't have this market power because there are many sellers in the market right and uh, easily substitutes are available so if you'll not give me at that price i can obviously go to the other one and buy from there right so <clears throat> so they they don't have that power to influence the price price is constant right only what they can change is the quantity right so that is what we will change when we will study the profit maximization for a perfectly competitive market right second and now now the third one uh, so the third one is that you know uh, buyers basically uh, they have complete information about the products of the you know uh, firm right so whatever they were producing in the past what they were producing in the present what price they were producing they have all this information uh, so that is that is one thing that we have and uh, the last one is that there is free entry and exit in the market right so there is no restriction any firm can enter and exit the market without any cost so these are certain assumptions that we make in the next video i'll be talking about uh, why in the long run a perfectly competitive firm with, uh, i mean a, a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market does not make any profit so you have to wonder on this in the brief period it can make a profit but why in the long run uh, you know uh, a firm in a perfectly competitive market will not make any money thank you so much have a very nice day bye bye and take